What percentage of modern women are marriage material? Uh, let me be honest. It's not very, it's not very many. You know why? Women are in tune to their body. They're not in tune with running a household. They're in tune to social media. They're not in tune with the needs of their significant other or their kids. They, you know, I, I'm just going to be honest. Women really is like, fuck men. It's all about me. And I don't know if it comes from the fucked up experience that they're, they've had. Or, I, 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 I don't know. Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Badash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect and much respect to the brothers pushing his word in the four winds of the earth. Shalom to you, few sincere sisters out there as well. It's Brother Ariyah coming at you with another lesson. And, um, this is a response to uh, the quick cut that uh, Apostle Zahar put up uh, earlier today. Uh, I believe the title was, This is Why uh, No One Wants the Judite Woman or the Jake Woman, a.k.a. the Black Woman, right? And uh, as you see in the video I just played, you know, that pretty much is solidified, man, you know? The two-third Jake woman, the two th the two-third uh quote unquote black woman, a so-called black woman is the lowest on the totem pole. Right? Now we're not saying that these other women ain't uh wicked, you know. Northern King Kingdom women are wicked too. You know, Edomite women are wicked, uh Indian, uh East Indian women are wicked, uh, you know, all these other nations of women, Moabite, Ammonite women, they're wicked as well. There's one attribute that all of them don't have <laughs> that the Judite woman is really exuding right now, man, proudfully, which is a masculine spirit, man, a masculine spirit, okay, and a uh, very uh, selfish, that real selfish spirit is all about me spirit, man, which no real man wants to deal with at all. And no real man is going to tolerate that type of behavior or bullshit, man. Okay? So I'm not going to go into the, the scriptures or show, oh, you know, this <laughs> all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman and all of those uh, classic scriptures, man. I'm not going to go into those. I'm going to go into these, man. Proverbs 31. Because when Isaiah 4 and 1 hit, you know, when that prophecy is, is finally fulfilled, all of them women, all of these women out here are going to follow suit, okay? They're going to be scared to death. The Heavenly Father is going to humble them with fear, man. And they're going to be on this type of time right here. This is Proverbs 31 and 10 through 15. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no, no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. It says, uh, she is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. And she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Now, one thing that I... I realized, man, that, you know, especially in that, uh, there's a video I was watching where um, a man was going around asking mainly Judite women, uh, if your man asked you to get up and cook him something at three o'clock in the morning, would you do it? And the majority of the women said no. And some women say, I'll, I'll, I'll fix him a turkey and cheese with some chips or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, most, you know, the Judite women said no with an attitude too, man. Like, I ain't got to do that. He get up and do it himself. All that shit is going to be done away with, man, when the Heavenly Father is done with you and your fucked up attitude, man, and the bullshit that you're on. Okay? So these things here that are listed right here, you know, as far as the food and, you know, how the woman's, you know, with clothing, you know, doing all, you know, making our own clothes, 
or working willingly, working willingly with her hands. These are the things that the women are going to be doing when Isaiah 4 and 1 come to pass. And it's not like these women don't know how to do it. They don't want to do it. They don't feel like they have to do it. Okay, but the Heavenly Father is going to put them in a position where either you do it or you're going to die. Because if a man of the Lord don't choose you, you are going to die out here, man. And this is the ultimatum that's going to be given to a majority of these women out here, man. Okay? And it says, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Okay? A lot of these women don't clean, man. They don't cook. They don't clean. They don't wash clothes. It's not that they don't know how to do it. They choose not to do it, you know, especially for the men in their lives, man. What man, what grown man wants to come home from work and enter into a dirty ass house when a woman's been sitting there all day being idle, not doing shit? You don't smell nothing cooking, ain't nothing clean. She's sitting there on her phone and Facebook, Instagram, watching Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives. All these things are counterproductive, man. You know? And soon, us brothers, we're going to have productive women. We're not going to have counterproductive women. We're not going to have lazy-ass women, man. And says her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays of her. How many of you brothers out there praise your woman? Let's just be real. Let's be real. You know? Honestly, I don't. Do I hope that she makes it? Yeah. But do I pray? <laughs> do I praise? No, I don't. I don't. Okay? Because my woman is lazy as hell. I had this conversation with Apostle Tahar over a year ago. He said, yo, brother, you got to stick it out with it. You can't leave. You can't leave. You know? And I was like, damn, I'm stuck. I was ready to go. But the Lord had it. Kahalal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Well, now me and her, we ain't together no more because she chose to leave. You know? Because of this truth. Because of, of, of my ways and actions, my thinking process. Because of my spirit. You know? Because of the things that I stand up for and believe in. She chose to leave. So that's not a that's not a loss, man. That's a win. That's a win right there. That's how I look at it. Okay? And if any woman out there leaves a man that is 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 uh, working for the Lord, man, and, and striving for righteousness, then you fucking stupid, man. So that's why I, I I liken her to a stupid woman, man. Okay, and it says favor favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And none of these women. Uh, you know, especially these two third women do not fear the Lord. This is why they do what they do. You know, most of these women, if you see these videos out here, most of these women, a lot of these women say, you know, they, they body count is over 100, man. And this is something that they think is cute. It's something that they <laughs> think is a badge of honor, man. You know, and it's not a badge of honor, man. It's a badge of shame. These women should be ashamed of themselves, but they're not. They're shameless, you know? And for the most part, most of these women out here are, are polluted, man. They, that, that land is greatly polluted, man, because all the sperm that's that's within them, man. For the most part, I don't even want no one. I ain't even going to look at a woman, man. You know, I'm going to look. I'm going to look, but I ain't going to smile at you, though. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, you know, in all seriousness, I ain't even looking for no woman right now, man. You know, being with that woman for 17 years, going through all the, the multiple hardships and bullshit, man, I'm good, man. I'm straight. You know? Let's get uh let's get Isaiah 4 and 1, man. Cause this is about to come to pass soon, man. It's gonna be a beautiful time for the brothers, man. You know? When we see the woman, how the Heavenly Father has fully humbled the woman, man, through fear, through hardships. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. 
Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach, man. That day is fastly approaching because the Heavenly Father is going to put these women through some shit, man. He really is. Just like we going through a refining process right now, these women right here that are talked about in Isaiah 4 and 1 are going to be going through a refining process as well. Salakia. They are. And they're going to be scared to death. So all of that, all of that feminine, that, that feminist bullshit is going to be out the window on that day, man. And they're going to know and understand that. And they're going to know that that thinking process ain't going to get them far. As a matter of fact, it ain't going to get them nowhere at all. So all of that shit is going to be done away, uh, done away with soon, man. Let's get Sirach. Let's get the book of Sirach. Um, 26 and 1 through 3. And it says, Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. A virtuous woman rejoiceth of her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord, man. Okay? So when Isaiah 4 and 1 hit, we're going to get these type of women, a good wife. Okay, a woman, uh, you know, that seeks to give a man peace, right? A woman that knows her place. A woman that's not going to overstep her boundaries, man. A woman that's not going to be disrespectful. A woman that knows what you need before you ask for it. A woman that's willing to do what you need done. Without you having to ask for it, man. That type of woman. You know? Not these women that, the, you know, huff and puff. If you ask them, yo, could you do my laundry for me? Could you make me something to eat? Could you clean the house up a little bit? They'll do it welcomely, man. They'll do it happily. When, four, when Isaiah 4 and 1 come to pass. But a lot of these women out here right uh, today are fucking proud, man. They're proud. And I can't wait till that great humbling process begins, man. Because that's what a lot of these women need, man. A, a, a good, a good uh, physical and spiritual ass whooping, man. That's what's needed. Let me get Ciroc 26. I ain't going to make this. I'm still, I'm in, I'm in Ciroc 26 right now. But yeah, Apostle Tahar, I'm a free man. She chose to leave, so I'm good now. Let's get, um, uh, 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 Ciroc 26, Marie 13. It says, the grace of a wife, the light of her husband and her discretion will fatten his bones. Right, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Right, a silent and loving woman, man. Many brothers don't have that either, man. You know, a lot of these women like to talk about a whole bunch of nothing, or just like to mouth off and be disrespectful and complain about every fucking thing, man. Don't show you no love at all, man. No compassion, no nothing. You know. But a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Heavenly Father, man. Let me get um, Sirach 25 and 20 real quick. Man. That's what that reminds me of. Um, Yeah, it says, uh, as the climbing up a sandy way, as the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man, Right? For the most part, I know most of these brothers are, you know, quiet men, you know, not really too talkative or over talkative, man. OK. And a woman that is not full of words and always talking, running her mouth, yapping about this, yapping about that, talking about other people, business things she has no business uh, even speaking on. Right. That's a beautiful thing, man, especially to a man that's not you know, wordy, a man that's not always talking, you know, a quiet man, you know, a quiet man loves a quiet woman, 
that's not going to disturb you and bother you and nag you and be on some bullshit all the time and trouble you any chance she gets. Let's get uh let's let's get 15. It says a shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace and her continent mind cannot be valued, man. Okay, a woman that knows, you know, what to do and what not to do, how to control herself, how to control her sexual desires, you know, not out here in every man's face, not up in, you know, the DMs and all that, man. Social media has given, uh, you know, uh, men a platform to get at any woman that they want, man. And women openly uh, are with it, you know. They with that, man. They on that type of time. You know, I miss the days when there was no social media, man. If you didn't have a woman's number, then you couldn't get at her, man. But now you can go on social media and see any woman on the internet, and a man can get at her whenever he wants, as, as much as he wants, until she blocks him. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, man. Okay? And that's what we're going to be getting in the kingdom, right? Of course. When Isaiah 4 and 1 comes around, that's when we're going to see the beginning of that, man. The beginning of the humbled woman, the fully humbled woman, man. That's when we're really going to get to see that, man. Lord willing, man. Lord willing I get to see that, man. Because these women out here are too damn proud, man. And this shit is getting out of hand. It really is. I'm going to end it here, though. I don't want to make it long. So lock here for my, my rambling and, you know. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I'm going to end it here with Proverbs 14 and 1. It says, every wise woman buildeth her house. Okay? That's what wise women do. You know? They're going to take care of home. Right? They're going to make sure the house is clean. They're going to make sure that food is cooked. They're going to make sure that laundry is done. They're going to make sure that everything is straight, man. That's what a wise woman does, you know? And for you other women that, you women out there that listen and you got men that's in the truth, cling on to that man. Respect that man. Appreciate that man. Because he's not only out there on the highways and byways to save his, to save his own soul, but in hopes that, he, that the Heavenly Father has mercy on his family and saves you and the children as well, man. That's definitely something worth respecting, man. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands, man. And that's what a foolish woman does, man. That's what a foolish woman does. So if a woman drops the ball, she just drops the ball. But cling on to your man, if definitely if he's in the truth, man. Cling on to him. Even, you know, your man that you with now. Because the fact that you believe, you know, he could be saved through you as well. You know? But man, this shit is getting out of hand, man. These men, these women are getting more and more boastful, more and more disrespectful, more and more proud. And I can't wait to the day that the Lord humbles these women that need to be humbled. Because there's going to be a lot of women out here getting put to death as well. A lot of men too. But this one is on the women. And a lot of these women out here are going to be put to death, man. You know, and that's because the Lord says so. And because there's more women out here than men. So you do the math. So you can't say, oh, he hate women. Uh, nah, not at all, man. You know, it just is what it is, man. It just is what it is. So this is a response video to, you know, Apostle uh, Tahar's uh, shortcut that he did earlier today, you know. And uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to say shalom to the next one.